Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, on behalf of the Washington Avenue Christian Church and the Elyria Historical Asso Association, uh, I am very pleased to welcome you to our marker dedication today of honoring the uh, life and work of William Graves Sharp. And uh, his story is on the marker. And later I'm going to tell you a few tidbits about him. Uh, but right now, I would just like to um, briefly uh, explain who we are. Uh, because if you're not intimately involved in the historical world, uh, there's all these different historical entities, and they all kind of sound the same. Uh, but the Elyria Historical Association is an affiliate of the Lorraine County Historical Society. And basically, what that means is we do not have our own nonprofit status. We take our status from the Lorraine County Historical Society, which is our parent organization. But our group only works on Elyria things, whereas obviously the County Historical Society works around the county. Uh, I'm pretty sure that all of my board members, uh, our abbreviation is EHA, I think they're all here today. I'm just gonna quickly identify, and if you'd give us a wave. Uh, our vice president is Jim Smith, he's back there. Our uh, secretary is Janet Bird. Our treasurer is Dave Wesley. And then we have three at-large uh, members, uh, Ann Michael and Ed Martin and Jeff Sigsworth. So I just wanted you to know who we are. Uh, I think it's obvious who the church is. And uh, we formed a really nice uh, partnership. Now, I'm filling uh, a couple of different roles today. Normally, the Ohio History Connection uh, would send a representative because they control the marker program. And uh, because of the COVID, uh, they're not sending anybody out. So I wanted to just briefly tell you uh, a little bit about the marker program, which normally they would do that. The marker program started in the 1950s. And there's basically two kinds of markers that, that they offer. Uh, the ones that you may have seen and not even paid any attention to are uh, corporate limit markers. They are black and white, and they sit at the entrance to a town. And they basically just say one thing about the town, like uh, Marion, Ohio, home of Warren G. Harding, would be an example, okay? Uh, these markers tell a story. And you can have a hundred and some words on each side. And our story went to both sides. So uh, the nice thing about these markers is that people can come and learn something more than just what the corporate limit marker would identify. But anyway, those are the two kinds of markers that the uh, state historical group uh, offers. And uh, just as an interesting uh, point here, the uh, Lorraine County, the number one marker of this kind in Lorraine County is over by the uh, UH Hospital, identifying uh, Elyria as the birthplace of Easter Seals. And that was way back in the late 1950s. Uh, this marker is number 35 in Lorraine County and number seven in Elyria. Uh, for a long time, people really didn't apply for these too much. 
but at the time of the state bicentennial in 2003, they really promoted it. And since then, uh, many people have gone through the process. And I will tell you later, uh, briefly, uh, what we went through to get the marker. It's not like you just send them the money and they send you a marker. There's a whole process. So uh, I think I've given you uh, enough background uh, to see how we got to here. Uh, the marker does honor William Graves Sharp, who, among other things, was the United States ambassador to France during World War I. And uh, the fact that his home was on this site. He was not the only one that lived in that house, but he lived here at the time he was the ambassador. And uh, part of the house is enclosed inside of the church, which is really, really neat. And uh, we have a couple pictures on the marker. Uh, so uh, it tells the story pretty well. So I'm going to invite some other people to come up and speak. And then I'm going to come back and give you a little bit more about what we went through, and we'll tear off the cover. So, uh, the Honorable Frank Whitfield is here today. If you'd like to come up and say something, why, we would like that. Thank you, Mr. Bird. And uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you to uh, Pastor Russell uh, and the church uh, for all that you do, not only uh, today, but what you do in the community. Uh, this, uh, t this, um, this figure, to me, represents a lot about Elyria. Um, and so many of you, as I look around, I've probably seen a lot of the history here. I'm young, as you know. Um, I'm a lot younger, so it's on the history I'm still learning. Uh, Mr. Jablonski has been doing a great job kind of schooling me on the history of Illyria. It's been exciting learning that, and uh, he's connecting me with other historians in Illyria. And uh, I just want to encourage you all, if you have uh, unique Illyria stories, to please share them with us. You know, as, as your leader in this city, uh, I think we don't know where we're going unless we know where we've been. And so it's critical for me to hear not just these these uh, these um, these renowned stories of ambassadors, but just the simple stories of, hey, this is what used to be in this neighborhood and we tried this and this is what happened or other success stories that happened that may not get the recognition they should. Uh, but I am excited that we are rep uh, recognizing um, uh, Mr. Grave Sharp for a number of reasons. One is this individual. Um, not only represented Illyria, they had a chance to represent Congress and then actually represented our country abroad. And I think that's a message that we can send to our young people here is that you can start here in Illyria and end up representing your country. I think that's a powerful message for our young people. Um, this really resonates with me uh, on election night. Uh, if you voted here, you, you probably saw me in the parking lot uh, asking for your support. Some would say begging for your support. Uh, but uh, just asking for your support here. And, um, you know, that was a very um, tense day, to say the least. And I asked Pastor Russell, I said, uh, Pastor Russell, I, I don't, you know, people were going to the bars and watching their uh, results and stuff. I said, I just really want to be in a church just praying and, and meditating and thinking about what this journey could mean and the work that we've done. I said, can, we, can I just sit in the church and just pray and just sit here and just think and have my family? So he opened the doors for us, and we're sitting there. My family's with me. We're sitting in the room there. And Pastor Russell comes up to me and said, did you know this room was the house of an ambassador and a congressperson for Illyria? And uh, we, my, we all started tearing up. <laughs> my whole family just started tearing up, just thinking about, wow, that uh, there's been greatness here before. And I really, you know... Um, tried to summon that same spirit of, hey, if I, if I get this opportunity, I'm going to try to represent the city the best that I can and uh, try to do what I can for the city to move it forward. So I'm appreciative of the opportunity to not only represent you all, fight for you all, serve you all. And uh, it's a humbling experience. Um, and I'm glad that we're recognizing figures. And let's do our best over the next uh, 100 years to, to create more of these markers around town. So thank you. God bless. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, very well spoken. 
Uh, next, I would like to uh, call up the current executive director of Lorraine County Historical Society, uh, Carrie Broom. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. The unveiling of this historical marker is truly a cause for celebration. It's the culmination of a lot of effort that we really recognize with gratitude. It's also a great day for all of us who appreciate history. Historical markers capture the stories of the people, places, events, and inventions that have shaped generations of Ohioans. So how many times lately have you heard that we're living in unprecedented times? Have you wished that we were living in precedented times? <laughs> so William Graves Sharp was born in 1859 and he died in 1922. He lived through the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, fires, floods, illnesses, including the Spanish flu. He witnessed the building of the Statue of Liberty, the first automobile, the Wright brothers flight, and a whole host of inventions, expansion of the country. So a lot of critical events that shaped our American life. I wonder if William Sharp thought that he was living in unprecedented times. History inspires us. It helps us understand the world around us. It gives us pride in who we are and where we come from. It shows us how we're all connected to each other. This network of historical markers here in Lorain County that Bill talked about in Ohio, in other states, and really across the country and across the world. They're across the world. That represents this connection. The Rain County Historical Society, if you follow us on Facebook, you know that we've been showcasing the historical markers in our county every week. So today we gain another stop in our Tour Stop Thursday series and the network of these markers grows stronger. The last few months, this year really, it's not been easy for a lot of people in our communities. We've changed our routines, we've changed the way we do business, or we've had it changed for us. But we know that the lessons of the past that we can learn from those. They can help us create the future that we want for ourselves or for the generations that are to come. So I think that's cause for celebration. So on behalf of Lorraine County Historical Society, thank you. We congratulate Elyria Historical Association, Washington Avenue, Christian Church, and Ohio History Connection. Thank you so much for the accomplishment of this marker today. Thank you for all that you've done for our community for bringing us the marker. Thank you very much, Carrie. Uh, you know, she gave a really interesting perspective of the things that Sharp lived through and experienced and how the, the world changed. Uh, and it's very interesting for anybody to see for their own life how things have changed. So uh, I appreciate very much uh, uh, having that perspective given along with everything else that, uh, that Carrie had to say. Okay. Uh, my running mate in this project, uh, the Reverend Nathan Russell of Washington Avenue Christian Church. Thank you, Bill. You have heard it said that it takes a village, and that is true with any effort of a church. 
So I want to recognize uh, Marty Rowe, who is co-chair of our property committee, and also Brad Timke, uh, who serves on our property committee. They are the ones who erected this sign, planted it in the ground. So thanks to the both of you. We are standing squarely on the shoulders of giants. As Christian people, we are students and conservers of history. Each week, we tell stories that are ancient, yet ever new, that are changing me and changing you. While the narratives are of long past, they impinge on our present in ways that inspire transformation. Speaking of history, we are standing on the shoulders of another giant today, William Graves Sharp. When Sharp purchased this home, I doubt that he had any idea that he would run for Congress, craft legislation for the beginning of airmail, or be appointed to France as the United States ambassador during World War I. His story is now part of our story. His history, part of our history. And the stories of Ambassador William Graves Sharp impinge on our present in ways that inspire transformation. One story, where you see our sanctuary here to your right, my left, William Graves Sharp planted a tree. Truth be told, he planted lots and lots of trees. It's a running joke around here. But he took an acorn from the, tree, from the peace tree that was planted at the courthouse of Appomattox, which is where the treaty that ended the Civil War was signed. And that acorn grew into a mighty oak where our sanctuary now stands. And if you think about it, how incredible is it that one tiny seed the size of an acorn could blossom and flourish into a tree, into a sanctuary that proclaims God's peace, God's justice, and God's shalom from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. So I don't think William Graves Sharp had any idea of what would happen in the future. History has not concluded. The story is still being written even now. Just about 30 minutes ago, I had a phone call from a number I did not recognize, and I thought about declining the call, but I answered. And on the other end of the phone was a man that said, is this Reverend Russell? And I thought, does Reverend Russell owe you money? Uh, and he said, my name is William Graves Sharp. He is William Graves Sharp the fourth. And we connected and he told stories about growing up and playing in this home of a dog that the family had named Trigg that was apparently well known throughout the city and made frequent trips to the hospital, rode on the elevators and how he has some of the first pieces of mail canceled through airmail, which his grandfather helped craft. We can only imagine how our present actions will impinge on the future that is not yet here, but is on its way. As students of history, we can learn from our ancestors and dream new dreams. Young and old will see visions about the future that God wants and ultimately will have. I cannot promise historical markers bearing our name in the future, but this I can promise. The stories that we create and write today will impinge on future generations and inspire transformation. Thank you very much, Pastor Russell. Uh, 
it, it's really neat. Uh, uh, two different uh, levels of the Sharp family have contacted the pastor within the last couple of weeks, and uh, we weren't really expecting that. They wouldn't have been able to travel here today anyway, but it's really neat to, uh, to know that there's a connection there. Uh, I have some correspondence to share, and I think I'm going to share one now and one at the end. When you uh, see the marker, uh, you will see that uh, William Graves Sharp was born in Mount Gilead, Ohio, and uh, this is a letter from the Morrow County Historical Society. This greeting comes from Mount Gilead, Ohio, which is the home of the Morrow County Historical Society. And now, as everyone knows, Mount Gilead was the first home of William Graves Sharp. We of the Morrow County Historical Society wish to congratulate everyone who played a part in making this new Ohio historical marker a reality. Ambassador Sharp's long and distinguished career certainly merits the kind of recognition that this marker provides for bo both current and future generations. Today's current generation of Morrow County citizens learned about Mr. Sharp one year ago. In 2019, the town of Mount Gilead conducted a ceremony to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the dedication of Morrow County's World War I Memorial, also known as the Victory Shaft. And there's a picture of that on the back. If you have time afterwards, you could, could take a look at that. Mr. Sharp's role as a speaker at the original dedication in 1919 was highlighted. No doubt that participation 100 years ago was especially meaningful for the retired ambassador. The location for the placement of the Victory Shaft Memorial, a 30-foot tall granite obelisk, was in the middle of the square in downtown Mount Gilead just a few hundred feet away from his birthplace. When considering Morrow County's notable native sons, only Warren G. Harding, 29th President of the United States, ranks higher than Ambassador William Grave Sharp. This splendid historical marker in Illyria will serve as a visible and constant reminder of a truly exceptional citizen of Lorraine County and Ohio. Yours truly, Daniel L. Rodebeck, Morrow County Historical Society. So Jeff Sigsworth uh, made that contact, and uh, it, it's really interesting uh, to find out a little bit more about the roots of Sharp. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for arranging that. Okay. Um, I thought it, it would hopefully be interesting for you to know uh, quickly I hope the process that you go through to get one of these markers, uh, there is only one application period per year. Your application has to be in by July 1. And they tell you that you're applying for a marker that would be a year from that or later. So we started in January of, uh, of 19, 2019 when uh, the EHA board decided that this would be uh, a project that we'd like to take on. Uh, we've done a couple other things around the town uh, and uh, this was an interesting idea. We approached uh, Pastor Russell in February of 19 and the church heartily agreed to come on board as partners uh, we had agreed on kind of a split of the duties, and uh, in the early going, EHA was going to do the, the bulk of the work, and at the end, the church was going to take care of getting it in the ground, which is no small task. 
Uh, eventually, I believe there will be some paver stones around here for a little landscaping as well. Uh, some people that I would like to thank from our organization, uh, everything that's on the marker has to be documented. And I lean very heavily on Jim Jablonski. Where's Jim? There you are, okay. Uh, Jim has, has written uh, two volumes of a history of Illyria, uh, bringing it up to the 200 years and beyond. And he did a lot of research on William Grave Sharp as part of his book. And I asked him to share that research for our marker. And he basically created the uh, original template of the wording. And most of what he wrote is what we ended up using. I met with Pastor Russell several times and we went back and forth on a couple items and agreed to add a couple of photos, which is an extra cost. But uh, all of that had to be done uh, to have the application completed and to Columbus prior to July 1 of 2019. I do want to thank Janet, my wife, because I can't type worth a hoot and she gets stuck doing all of that. Uh, also, uh, Eric Greenlee, who's the archivist at the LCHS, uh, he prepared the two photos to the specifications that they wanted for the marker. Okay, so around November of 2019, we found out that we had made the cut. There were 70 applications last year, 27 were approved. And we were one of 10 that got a stipend to help pay for it, which is really nice. We got $1,000 off the cost and we split that equally with the church. So that, that was uh, an unexpected bonus. Well, the Ohio History Connection slices and dices all of the things that we write. They check our facts and they question what they feel they need to question and they do a little tweaking of the wording. Uh, this came back to me the third week of May this year. And they said, if you can turn it around in a week, we can make your marker by when you want it. So we did. And uh, we actually did a little additional research because of something that they questioned. And uh, I found out a lot about Sharp, uh, interesting behind the scenes things. And again, uh, Eric helped with that and Jeff Sigsworth helped a lot with that. And so I certainly want to thank them again. Uh, we did a little retweaking of the state's tweaking. <laughs> and, uh, and finally it was a go. Then the money had to be sent and the markers are made in Marietta by the Siwa Company. They're just one company that, that has made all these markers for the program. The marker arrived August 14th. And that's where Marty Rowe got involved, uh, helping uh, receive the marker, storing it in the garage back here. Uh, Brad Themke uh, did the installation. We're very grateful for that. And uh, also uh, Diana Tyler, are you out here somewhere? Yes, okay. Diana did the, uh, all the press release for this and she also prepared and laminated the little handouts today, which are very, very nice. So, and, uh, and Nathan uh, is responsible for the sound system and the, uh, the filming uh, so that this can be viewed on YouTube by people who are not here today. Uh, so many thanks to all those people from the church uh, for this end of the project. Okay, hopefully you're not too bored. Uh, I have a few more things. Some things that you will not read on the marker. 
Um, uh, William Graves Sharp had a twin, George, and the two of them uh, came to Elyria from Mount Gilead with their mother and her parents very, very early in their lives. And basically, the twins were reared by the grandparents. Uh, there was uh, a marriage issue there, uh, a divorce apparently, and uh, mom got remarried, and the boys grew up in Elyria with their grandparents. So uh, Grandfather Sharp was very responsible for the development of William Graves and his twin brother. He worked for a factory owned by George Ely to earn the money to go to law school in Michigan. It wasn't a scholarship, he earned the money. And he was Lorain County prosecutor at the age of 25. So our mayor thinks he's young, but I mean, that's really young to be Lorain County prosecutor. And he really didn't want to be in politics particularly, but he was encouraged and he ended up running for the House of Representatives in a dominantly Republican district, and he was Democrat, and he won by 1,600 votes. And the next time he ran, he won by 8,000 votes. And the third time, he won by 12,000 votes. So clearly, he was somebody who could get along with people. He had tact and a lot of abilities, and that's what led to his success in life and eventually his appointment as ambassador to France. Now, uh, he was appointed in June of 1914, I'm sorry, 1915, uh, but his wife was too ill to travel, so they didn't go at first. But then World War I broke out in Europe, and he decided he'd better get over there. So he ended up sailing in August of 1915 and took his eldest son, George, with him. Uh, his wife still couldn't travel. So it was kind of an interesting situation. And then because the war had already broken out, the sitting ambassador did not step down right away. And interestingly enough, uh, that person was Myron Herrick, who was also uh, s someone with great Lorraine County connections. Uh, but uh, Sharp had some time in Paris to get the lay of the land and all of those sorts of things. And he did finally in December uh, replace Herrick as ambassador. The United States was neutral at that point. So he did what ambassadors would do of a neutral country. And then later, he was the ambassador of a country at war. So his role changed. So he had quite an experience during his four years and uh, was well liked in Paris, and he stepped down after the war ended and returned to Illyria. Just a few words about the house. The house predates the Civil War, and it was built by, or well, it was built for a person named George Starr. And George's brother, Horace Starr, built a house almost identical across the way. Uh, they were two of the earliest houses on this street because the bridge across the river up here was not built until Illyria was roughly 35 years old. So you couldn't come from downtown to here. You had to go all the way around. So the land down here was not developed until the 1850s, and the two star houses were a couple of the earliest ones built. 
Uh, interestingly, they both wound up in the hands of churches in, this, in the 20th century, and uh, part of the George Star House, as I already said, is enclosed. If you have the opportunity when COVID's not with us, uh, the parlors are amazing. And Lorraine Kai Historical Society restored the Horace Star House, which had been owned by the uh, Baptist Church, the Elyria Baptist Church, and uh, most of that is still there. It was altered a little bit. But uh, if you wanna kind of see what this looks like in real life, uh, the one across the street is very similar. Okay, so uh, Sharp was not the only resident of this house, but he did live here when he was appointed ambassador, and he lived here again afterward until he passed away. All right, at this time, I mentioned that the Ohio History Connection would normally be here, and, and obviously they're not, but they did send a letter. Congratulations on your new Ohio historical marker. I am sorry that a worldwide pandemic has put a damper on your celebrations and on my being able to send a representative of the Ohio History Connection to join your September 3 dedication. Enclosed are some commendations from our director and board uh, to congratulate you on your hard work to mark an important and interesting piece of Lorain County history. Please know that we will be thinking about you on the day and wishing you fair weather, well that worked, and happy celebrations. I look forward to seeing your marker in person when the world gets an all clear on travel and crowded gatherings. Please be sure to send photographs of the marker, front and back and location, as well as your gathering. Thank you for all of the hard work you put into coordinating this Ohio historical marker. It has been a joy working with you on the project. And it's signed by Laura Russell, historical markers coordinator of the uh, Ohio History Connection. So, uh, there is there is a folder, and inside is a certificate. And I would like to present uh, to the Washington Avenue Church their certificate. If the pastor could receive that. Thank you so much, Bill. Very welcome. We can't shake hands. Do you need a photo op, though? Oh, you got it. All right, very good. Okay. Uh, there's also one, I told you how difficult it is to keep names straight. And here are people in the field, thankfully the marker's correct, but this is commending the Illyria Historical Society. <laughs> I'm going to ask them to redo the inside, <laughs> but, uh, but the, uh, the EHA group did also get uh, one of these from the state. How am I doing, Marty? I'm almost done. Okay, good. Uh, I forgot one, one thing I did want to say. Uh, why September 3rd? Um, we had to put a date down for a tentative dedication way back in 2019, and we looked at all the different dates that applied to Sharp, like birth date, death date, when he was appointed ambassador was actually a little too soon, uh, June, to ensure that the marker could be done in time. And so we finally hit on, oh, well, all of those other dates were in, in the winter or cold weather. And, and I've done a marker in crummy weather, and it's not fun. Uh, <laughs> so, so September 3rd is actually the day that he arrived in Paris. And that's how we hit upon this day. And I believe, and, and Jeff, the, Jeff, the uh, genealogist supreme says we may be one day off on this, but uh, a granddaughter who came from William Grave Sharp II uh, unfortunately passed away a couple weeks ago 
but, but her birthday is September 3rd. So that was just an interesting coincidence. And her ashes are going to be interred back here in Illyria uh, at some point in the future. She was living in the Washington, D.C. area, but contacted the church. So anyway, September 3rd turned out to be an interesting day. I believe we're ready to pull the cloth. Um, I would like Jim Jablonski to be part of pulling the cloth. He had an awful lot to do with this. And Pastor, uh, do you want, who do you want to come? We, we didn't talk about this. This is our one point of disorganization. I think we just unclip it and let it go. Okay, very good. Mayor Whitfield, come on up here. Okay. Okay, all right. Go for it. Go for it. We will. I just super want to thank everybody for coming today. And again, uh, the, the EHA uh, group is small but mighty. And the church has been fabulous to work with. And I'm real glad. Uh, I hope you take the opportunity to come up and look at the marker uh, after we, we break. Thank you again.